Welcome to the DK Custom Products YouTube channel. Today we're going to be taking the horrible 11 inch shocks off of this Sportster. Not only are the shocks bad, but that the, the 11 inch instead of the 11 and 3 quarter or 12 or 13s that they use on other ones, they're absolutely horrible. And uh, we're going to be putting these 13 inch on there. We're going to be installing these twin adjustable shocks, but before I get into the installation, if you could like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, we'd appreciate it. Now, when ordering shocks from us, we ask what bike it's going on, how much you, the rider weighs, if you ride with a passenger, how much the passenger weighs, luggage, etc., and then we adjust the shocks for your weight. That doesn't mean that when you get it and you ride it, you might not want to play around with it. We always, on the twin adjustable, set the damping at three. You have one, two, three, four, five. Three is almost always the best, going to give the best ride. But don't hesitate to put one at two and the other at three, or one at three and the other at four, just to play around to see what gives you the best ride how the bike rides is subjective to each person. Also, you can use the included spanner tool and you can turn the preload on the shock to increase or decrease the preload. These are already set and usually doesn't have to be changed at all. So let's go ahead and pull off the factory shocks and get these on there. Now these are supposed to be tightened to 40. We don't know if they are, but we're just gonna take these off so this is a typical Hurley Sportster shock. Look how much travel it has there because it's 11 inch. I mean, hardly anything. And then you can adjust the preload. So look at the difference between travel. Let's go ahead and... When we do this side, the tire is going to drop down and we may have to lift it up a little, put these larger shocks on here. With the twin adjustable, we do have, they come with multiple different spacers. So we're going to see which ones we have to use to go on either side of the eyes here. And these are separated shocks. They're not emulsion shocks like this. The nitrogen and the uh, fluid are in different compartments, so they can run upside down, right side up. We'll go ahead and put them right side up, but with the just so that you know that on these, you can run them either way. So there's different size spaces where we're going to really big offset very small. They go right in here like this and we're going to see which ones we need. But the first thing we have to do is get that bike up higher because come look over here. See, we can't mount it up because the holes for the shocks are in a different place because these shocks have so much more travel to them. Okay, not only are the reasons for the different size spacers just to, on this bike simply to get this out further, but if you had mounting hardware like a, uh, um, a luggage rack, especially if it's one of the removable quick release ones, you might have to space it out to get more room for all the hardware with that rack. Also, if you have a bag, you might need to get it more inboard so it doesn't hit the bag that goes over the shock. So just uh, play around and see what's best. See, we could probably use the thin washer here, the thin spacer on the inside. But I uh, I just want to get the head of this out from this spacer here 
so that when it articulates, there's no chance of it uh, messing up. Also, you notice, always put your rebound damper to the outside. You don't want to be reaching around to the inside. You don't want to mount it like that. You want to mount it like this. So, and we reuse the same bolt and we put thread locker on these. There we go. And we're going to duplicate what we did on the top, on the bottom, we're going to put the heavier, thicker spacer right here, the thinner one right here. And you notice this trim piece came up here off of the factory ones, and we could reuse that, but we're not going to. I think it looks better without it. Um, so this goes through that hole right there, and then there's a nut back here, and I didn't put the thread locker in the right place for this nut, so we're going to put a little thread locker on the nut, and put that in. Now you can see and I have this on three, you can see how close this is when it's totally unloaded to the exhaust. So if you wanted to use 14 inch shocks on here, you'd be in trouble because it would put the swing arm further down and even 13 and a half inch shocks would be a problem. So because at 13 inches, when it tops out, it's about an eighth of an inch away from these particular slip ons just tighten these down, snug them down, and then we're going to get the torque wrench out. I'm going to get the torque wrench out now and tighten these down to 40 foot-pounds. These shocks provide an immensely better ride. You can adjust the preload by turning this to tighten it to give you more preload, loosen it to give you less preload, and then you have your uh, damping adjustment down here. They should come to you exactly set up for the weight you gave us, but you can adjust a little, but don't adjust too much at a time. Do a little at a time so that you can get back to the starting point in case every adjustment you try isn't as good as what you got it another, at. Another really important thing that you can use if you really want to dial in the tune on your shocks is this rubber bumper that's at the bottom. Be very careful when you are moving this rubber bumper. Really, it's better to do it with a pencil or something because you don't want to scratch the shaft because if you scratch the shaft, it can put wear on the seal. So push this rubber bumper up. Go for a ride. Hit your normal amount of bumps. Don't go looking for the biggest bump. Just hit your normal bumps that you hit. And you want to see this bumper go all the way down to the bottom. If it's not going all the way down to the bottom, you have too much preload and you want to loosen this up so that when you hit a good size bump, it pushes that bumper all the way down. That tells you you're getting all the travel you can out of the shock. So whenever I install a new... Uh, set of shocks on a bike, I'll put the preload at what we have in our chart for the weight and always put this on three, but then go for a ride and see where the rubber bumper ends up. And if it's not all the way down, give it a little less preload. One other little uh, thing to know, a lot of people go, oh, it's too stiff. So five is hard and then one says soft, okay? But, so a person goes, oh, well, it's riding too hard, so I'm gonna put it soft. But when you put it on two or one, that thing is gonna pogo, because it doesn't have enough rebound damping, and so it's just gonna bounce like a pogo stick. And so um, putting it to two or one, even though it says soft there, might end up in a bouncier, stiffer 
less comfortable ride because you don't have enough damping going on at one or two. So the rubber bumper is something that you can use to see if you're getting all your travel. The rubber, rubber bumper is also there so that when you do bottom out, it's not metal against metal and it's not a jolt. I like my shocks to push the rubber bumper all the way down so it's bottoming out. But this rubber bumper, which is about an inch thick, will compress down to about a half an inch before it actually really bottoms out. So now we're going to put the weight of the bike on there. And you can see it pushing that rubber bumper down. Now I'm going to take the weight back off and you'll see how much sag just the bike gave this shock. So that's just the sag on this is almost the full travel on the shocks we took off. If you have questions, please give us a call or email us at support at dkcustomproducts.com. Also, the link to these shocks and other shocks will be in the description below. You all ride safe out there.